Okay, a lot of people had questions about closure, and since we will not have la a class again until Thursday, I thought I would try just making a little screencast of me walking through the solution to one of the harder problems. Um, not one of the ones that's actually assigned, but one that's quite similar to some of the ones that are assigned. would also strongly recommend reading the maze example uh, at the end of, I think, chapter three or four of the book. Um, uh, the closure book, because those uh, examples, I think, give you a really good sense of how somebody might use closure on an interesting problem. So the problem I'm going to look at is the graph connectivity pro problem from foreclosure. And basically the idea is given a graph, we have to determine whether it's connected. We're given the graph as a set, that's the pound hash, I mean, so that hash curly brace thing, of vectors that are ordered pairs, um, although we're supposed to ignore their order. So an edge from 1 to 2 is the same as an edge from 2 to 1. Um, so this graph has edges from 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 1, da 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 da. And our goal is to determine if the graph is connected. Um, so this graph, for example, is not connected because this little edge xy here, x and y are only connected to each other and not to any of the other things. Whereas this graph is connected because x is connected to y as before but also x is connected to a, and a is then connected to everything else. So we're going to take a stab at that problem. First thing I've done is actually I've taken these tests that we got from foreclosure, and I've turned them over here in Eclipse into actual kind of unit tests in foreclosure. This requires uh, using the closure test namespace, or I could just say closure.test slash is. Um, whenever I call is, but is comes from closure.test. So this is kind of like an import um, in Java land. And uh, so I've just turned all the tests into is unit tests by just putting is in front of them. Um, and I've got a stub for my method. I'm going to call it connected, and it's going to take a graph. And at the moment, it just returns true, which clearly doesn't work. Um, and if I go to my closure menu and I say load file and REPL, then these tests fail. Actually, only two of them fail. The two that are expecting false um, both fail and everything else passes. Um, so this gives me better feedback than I would get in foreclosure directly. So I think this is useful. So here's my battle plan. Um, I need to see if a graph is connected. Um, I've decided I'm going to have a map that maps each node the set of all the nodes we know at the moment that that is connected to. And so at the end, I'll have a map that, for example, in this case, A will map to everything except X and Y. B will map to a set that's got everything but X and Y. X will map to a set that has just X and Y, and Y will map to a set that has just X and Y. So I'll know sort of who's connected to what, and at the end of that, if I look at what the set of things the very first node is connected to, if that's everything, then we're done. All the nodes in the graph are connected. If that's not everything, then the graph isn't connected. So if I build this map that shows me the connectivity in the graph, then solving the problem comes down to just looking at any node. I mean, I'll do it for the first node because it's the easiest one to get to, but it could be any node. Um, if the graph is fully connected, every node should map to the same set of nodes, namely the set of all the nodes in the graph. So that's my battle plan. Um, we'll see how that works out. Um, so now, the first thing, so and I, I must say, I thought about this quite a bit before I started programming. I think that we're used to, in languages like Java and with all the support that Eclipse gives us, um, being kind of like, oh, I don't know if I really understand what's happening here, but if I start typing, maybe it'll become clear. And I think that's much harder to do in Clojure. I think you have to kind of have a plan, um, have sort of an algorithm and a solution in mind before you uh, can launch into something. So when I spent a little time thinking about how I would solve this, and I think there's probably a lot of ways to solve this, is just a way to solve it. Um, and I'm not sure it's the most efficient because I end up computing the set of nodes everything's connected to, and that might be more than's actually necessary 
um, the minimum spanning tree might actually make more sense and then you would look at the number of nodes in the minimum spanning tree and if that's equal to the number of nodes in the graph then you're done and everything's connected but I'm gonna do it this way we'll see what happens um, so I need to make this map and then I'm going to fill it by calling um, uh, a helper function um, and I'm, I'm going to use reduce and a helper function and using a helper function and a defin like this totally won't work in foreclosure so when I'm done getting it work here we'll have to do a little tidying to make it so that it works in foreclosure but what we're doing in Eclipse now is actually much more like real closure programming so that's really okay so my idea is to do something like um, reduce Ah, I need an open print. Reduce. Then uh, something like process connection. Oops, connection. Which is something I'll have to write. And now reduce takes three arguments. The first is the function that we apply to every item in the list. The second is the initial value that's going to be the thing that ends up being the result value. Um, and then the last is a list of things that we're going to map across. So I know I'm going to reduce across the graph. So I'm going to I want to process each one of all each one of the elements in this set. Okay, so I want reduce to sort of work across there. I'm going to have some function process connection that takes a connection and the current value and generates the next value. And then I have to figure out, well, what's that going to look like? Um, well, what actually is the value that I'm going to... Uh, ooh, ooh, yeah, I'm a little ahead of myself. Um, let's actually call this a function, a new function. Um, Defin build all connections. It's going to take a graph. And it's going to call reduce process connection. That's going to have some starting value and it's going to take the graph. And then this is going to need to call that, get this map of connections and then see if the first one has all the nodes. Um, so I'm going to need something like if the um, the list of nodes, which we haven't defined yet, so we have to do something about that, is equal to actually let's, um, I'm not being very clear about this, my apologies. Let's actually do a let because I think it's going to be a lot easier to read. So we're going to say nodes is something, I'll have to fill that in, and let's say that all connections is the result of calling build all connections with the graph. Doom. 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 So if we have those two things, then so nodes is going to be the set of all the nodes in the graph. All connections is going to be this map that maps a node to all the things it's connected to. And what I need to do is take the first thing from all connections, which will be whatever the first pair in the map is, and take the second part of that, which is the list of all the things that are mapped to that, that first node is connected to, and see if that's equal to nodes. So equal nodes, second of first of all connections. Now I have no idea if my prints are here. Oh, they are. How happy. So all connections is a map. A map from nodes to sets of nodes that represent all the nodes the key node 
is connected to. Okay. And so if I have a map, first of a map is going to give me the first pair in the map, which is really kind of arbitrary because I don't know the order that things will come out in, but I don't care because any node will do. Second is going to give me the set of things that that first node is connected to. And if that is equal to all the nodes, then I win. That first thing is connected to all the nodes, therefore everybody's connected to all the nodes. If that part doesn't make sense, you should totally ask me about it. Hopefully it does. Okay, so I gotta figure out how to make a list of all the nodes. Um, and actually I dorked around with this a fair bit uh, when I first looked at this. Um, and eventually, so I, I thought, well, I'd use flatten. I mean, here's this list of things. Um, if I flattened that, I would get a list. Well, you can't flatten a set. So I had to turn it into a vector and then flatten it. But I wanted it to be a set because I didn't want duplicates. I didn't want two to appear twice because it's in two edges. So I had to turn the set of edges into a vector of edges, flatten that, and turn the result back into a set. So then it was set. Vec, no, flatten, vec of graph. And that gave me um, a list of all the nodes. And we can try that down here just if we don't sort of trust ourselves. Um, so we could say set, flatten, vec. And then I could, let's just grab one of these guys since it's here. And we get the set one, two, three, four, five, six, which is great because that's exactly the set of nodes that we want. So that gave me, give me the set, gave me the set of nodes. You know, if you're not sure you're getting this right, one thing you could do is pull that out into its own little function, write some tests for it, blah blah blah. blah. But I'm just going to take that as good, um, and we'll move on. Okay, so now connected is actually all done. Of course, I pushed almost all the work off into build all connections. Well, that should be connections. Um, and, oh, I got it right down here, okay. Um, so I've pushed up almost all the work to build all connections, but um, connected is pretty much done. So now, build all connections is going to take a graph and return a map that maps nodes to sets of nodes that represent all the nodes the key node is connected to. I just copied or retyped basically this comment. Um, so, mm, might be useful to have a test here because this is likely to be sort of complicated. Um, I don't write a lot of tests in interest of moving things along. But let's write a few. So is equal build all connections. Let's do something simple. Uh, oops, bracket A, bracket B. And what's that going to be equal to? Well, we're going to have let's drop that down so we have we have a map which is just a curly brace. It's going to map A to the set A, B. So A is connected to both A and B. And B is connected to both A and B. Okay? So that, hopefully, would pass if we get this right. And let's do another one build all connections. Let's do one of the slightly larger ones. Uh, let's actually do this disconnected graph um, because I think that would be useful to make sure that we're getting uh, the disconnectedness of it correct. So, oops, I put that in the wrong place. That should have gone there. And so if we build all the connections here, 
my map is going to take A and map it to the set A, B, C, D, and E. And it, B is going to map to the same thing. And C is going to map to the same thing. D is going to map to the same thing. E is going to map to the same thing. So I'm just going to grab all of this and just paste, paste, paste paste, and now x is going to map to the set x, y, and y is also going to map to the set x, y. Okay, so that will give me a couple of tests, um, and also gives us an example to look at and think about um, as we're going through this. And so my idea is reduce is going to go through all the nodes of the graph, so um, pairs like AB and XY, and for each edge, which is a pair, we're going to use process connection to update this connectivity graph, to take in an existing connectivity graph and update the graph. So I need two things. I need to define process connection. We'll get there in a second. And I need a starting point. And I think there's a number of ways you could start um, I decided to start with a map that maps every node to the set containing just itself. Um, because I need to know that every node can get to itself for starters, um, so that in the end I'm guaranteed that all the connection um, connected two sets will have all the nodes. I have a feeling there might be a way to do this where you start with just an empty graph, but I didn't see it immediately, so I decided to do this. Um, so we need to come up with the initial set of nodes and or initial set of connections and uh, so I'm going to actually do a let on that also because I don't want to have to do all this in one step. So initial connections is going to be hmm so I want to create a new map that for every node in the graph has uh, a set, a map, an entry of the form that the node maps to a set containing just itself. Um, it seemed to me I should be able to do this with map, I, like not map as a data structure, but map as a function. I couldn't figure out how. So after dorking around, I ended up doing this with reduce. Um, and this was suggested in part by some things on the cheat sheet and in the closure documentation. So I actually did um, uh, reduce, and again, we're going to need to have some function and some starting value. Um, and I just did this over all the nodes. Well, lo and behold, I don't have the nodes in this function, so I need the nodes again. This is sort of dumb. Um, to repeat this. So I'm going to do it anyway because we're going to collapse all this in a bit when we have to go to um, foreclosure. But this is really kind of gross and I should have probably made a nodes function that did this. So I'm going to redo my nodes thing. And so I'm going to initial connections, I'm going to reduce some function with some starting value over nodes. The starting value is just going to be the empty map. So if there are no nodes, we'll just get the empty map back. And then the function needs to take the map, the current map, and a node uh, and add an entry for it. And ASOC does that, stands for associate. Um, oh, I need a function, don't I? FN. Um, so we're going to have our um, map M and our node N. They're not great names, but there we'll roll with it. And I'm going to call ASOC, and I'm going to say, I'm going to say ASOC takes the map first, and then it takes the new key, which is going to be the node, and the new value, which is going to be a set containing the node. And that should give me uh, the initial graph. 
And again, we could test that um, down here in the REPL if I just replace nodes with some list or some set. Um, Five, eight, nine, six, three. Ba so we get a map that maps nine to the set containing nine, eight to the set containing eight, six to the set containing six, five to the set containing five, and three to the set containing three. Awesome. So that seems like that's a happy thing. Again, you know, we could have pulled this out to a function, given it some tests, all of that stuff, um, which wouldn't be bad. And if you're, you know, nervous or anxious about getting this stuff right, split it up into chunks, write tests for it, you know, do all the things that, you know, we know are good things to do from a software development perspective. So that gives me the initial set of nodes, and so that's what I can put in here. Initial connections. So now I'm going to have some function process connection. Um, I'm going to have an initial value, initial connections, and then the graph itself. And reduce is going to grab all that stuff and do the happy thing. So now all we have left to write is process connection. So let's uh, think about what that's going to do. Um, Defin process connection is going to take a set of connections. This the, this map or connection map maybe is a good name for it, and it's going to take an edge, and it's going to return another connection map. So this is going to take a connection map and an edge. So a connection map is a map nodes to sets of nodes that are all the nodes the key node connects to and an edge and returns a new updated connection map. So that means if we have some map and we see an edge from A to B, we have to generate the new map. So what does that mean? Well, if you think about if we, we, we know some things are connected to other things and somebody hands us a new edge. Well, and let's say it's from A to B. We know A is connected to B now, which we may or may not have already known. We also know that because A is connected to B, everything that A was connected to is now connected to everything that B was connected to. Right? So you think about it that the set of nodes that A is now connected to is the union of the set of nodes A used to be connected to and the set of nodes that B is connected to. And in fact, the set of nodes for everything A used to be connected to and everything B used to be connected to, all of those now connect to the union of those two initial sets. So what I'm going to do when I get a new edge is I'm going to union those two sets and then any node that isn't part of that new marriage of joy and happiness is going to map to the same set it used to, because nothing's changed in its world. But anybody that's in that set is now going to map to that set, because that set's now its connected set. So we'll build that union, and then we will build a new map where everything maps to either what it used to, or it'll map to this new union set. So hope that makes sense as a plan. We'll see what happens. So I'm going to say let, because I want to give names to some things where I'm going to get hopelessly lost. So A is going to be first edge. B is going to be second edge. So those are the two nodes that form the edge that we're adding. I'm going to get the connections out of A. Uh, and I'm going to use the fact here that a map is a func can be seen as a function, and that you can call it oops, with uh, a key, and it will give you the value associated with that key in the map. So this is a map that takes nodes and gives us sets. 
So this is going to take this node and give us back the set of all the nodes that A is connected to. And we'll do the same thing for B. And then I'm going to merge them. And oh, union, union is in closure.set. And if we do this in Eclipse, it'll actually, oh no, it won't. So we either have to say use closure.set or we have to say closure.set slash union to call it. And I'm going to do that latter one because when we put this back in foreclosure, they don't let us do use clauses in foreclosure. So I'm going to actually have to directly uh, explicitly refer to union as being a thing in closure.set. So I'm going to union those two sets of connections. That gives me my merge set of connections. So now I'm almost there. I just need to build this new map. Now, I thought about this quite a lot. It wasn't clear to me how to build this map. And it's I kept thinking there would be something I could do with map, the function that would do the right thing. And uh, I sort of struggle with this some. In the end, what I ended up doing was I used zip map. So zip map, if we run down here to the REPL, zip map takes um, two lists and makes a map by using things from the first list as keys and things from the second list as values. So A, B, C, ah, um, 5, 8, 9. And so now we get the map that maps C to 9, B to 8, and A to 5. Turns out we got it sort of in backwards order just because that's how map chose to order things. But we got the right pairings. So I decided to use zip map to map the set of nodes as keys to the result of this if test, it's like if you're in merge connections, then map to merge connections. Otherwise, map to the old thing you used to map to. Um, so it worked. I'm not sure I was thrilled with it, but it worked. So we ended up with zip map. And now I needed the set of nodes. Look, I need the nodes again. How annoying is that? So I'll have to compute that. And then, uh, so the nodes will be the keys. And then the... Um, values are going to be the result of mapping something across the nodes. Okay. And the something here is going to take a node and if that node is in merge connections then we're going to return merge connections. Otherwise we'll return whatever was that node used to map to in the connection map we were handed. So we'll have a function, and I just did this with the pound thing, which, you know, is getting pretty big for a pound thing, but it worked. Um, if contains uh, merged connections, uh, the argument, so if that's in there, so if this node is in the set merge connections, then the thing I want that node to map to is merged connections. Otherwise, what do I want it to map to? I want it to map to the old value connections. Oh, map. I've been using this singular here and plural there just to make life complicated. Connections map of dollar a percent one and that gets us the old value and then we'll map that across nodes so this says if the node was in the big marriage set then its new list of things it's connected to is the big marriage set otherwise it connects to the same old things it used to so we just grab that and then that oh we need nodes so I'm going to have to do a let yet again. Although actually here, because I've got this whole map, I don't have to 
go through the graph, and I don't even have the graph, so I can't go through the graph and get it, but the, the set of keys to the connections map is actually just what I need. Um, so I can just grab the set of keys from the connections map, and that's going to give me the set of nodes that I want. And you know, with a little luck, I've got all my punts in the right place. So this might, might actually work. I say we save it and find out. So closure, load file and REPL. No, didn't like it. Oh, closure.set. We have to put a quote, I think, when we're doing that. Use closure.set. Oh, I spelled it wrong. Can I gum it? Has that been the problem all along? It has. I am an idiot. I am such the dope. So it's closure.set without the quote. And it works. Holy moly. Okay. Closure.set slash union. And look, when I do it that way, it even lets me do autocomplete. Good grief. Okay. Run. Hey, we passed all the tests. We printed a whole lot of stuff out. Let's make that go away. But we passed the test. We're done. I dig it. True. So if if any of the tests had failed, we would have gotten all kinds of noise back. But when we just get true at the end, um, it means that actually all the tests passed. So we are in fact awesome. And so we can say things like uh, build all connections, and we can hand it um, you know one of these graphs. I don't know. Let's hand it this thing. And we should get back um, one of our connection graphs. So E connects to A through E. D connects to A through E. Blah, 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 blah. X only connects to X and Y. And Y only connects to X and Y. Um, and we could call connected on that same thing. Connected. Boom. And that says false because the X and Y part's disconnected. But if we connected... And then we added a connection from Y to C. Then it's true. It's all connected. So it works now. Um, my apologies for wasting all that time because I misspelled um, closure in my reference to union. Where'd that go? Oh, it's up here. Um, that was just dumb. And I'm sorry about that. That was silly. Um, I'm not even going to edit it out, though. You just get it as is. Um, so there we go. Um, a solution to the problem. Oh, we need to make this actually work in foreclosure, don't we? So, okay, we got the code that works. But now our solution uses defins and things all over the place. So we're going to need to uh, uh, turn this into something that uh, foreclosure can absorb. Uh, so... I'm actually do a lot of this editing here in Eclipse because I'm just going to have better editing tools. So I'm going to just pull the functions out so that I have them together. And... Okay. So, connected needs to call build all connections. Which means build all connections needs to be defined in um, this let. So I'm going to need to put build all connections right here in the let. It's going to need to be an fn, and then I can grab all of this, paste in the body. Um, so let's see, tab, tab. Have 
where are we on print? Oh, I even got the right print. Um, now, I didn't actually need this nodes because it, we already knew the nodes. So I could actually get rid of this part of the let, the in, inner let. And I can also move this initial connections outside, put it just above this. Um, I'm going to move this comment because it's now going to just get confusing. So initial connections, I'm going to move um, right here. And then I can lose this inner let and lose a print there. So nodes is going to be that. Initial connections is going to be this. Build all connections is going to be this function that takes a graph and calls reduce on it. Um, and then all connections is going to be the result of calling build all connections on the thing. And then we're there. Except we now need to, and I can get rid of this now, because that's been swallowed. We need process connection because it gets called right here. Ah, ooh, that was weird. Uh, it gets called right here and we need its definition to be in the let as well, along with oh, some other things. So um, we're going to need uh, process connection to be a function that takes, well, see now from here on, ah, I can just grab all this stuff. Boom. Reindent everything. Okay. And now, let's see, is there anything in this interlet I could get rid of? No. A refers to edge, so we can't change that. A connections and B connections refer to this, so I can't get rid of them. Merge connections refers to A and B. I can get rid of nodes, though, because once again, nodes is still there and still the same. So I can pull that out, boom, and then we'll zip map, and then in theory, everybody should be good. We indent the whole world just to be paranoid. So this is nearly there, and we just need to say FN and graph. And in principle, that might work. So we'll say copy, run over here to foreclosure, paste, and run. Oh, look at the green, shiny green, we win. We are awesome. So there is a reason that is listed as a hard problem. It's not a lot of code. I mean, when you're done, right? What's that, 15, 20 lines? But that's a lot of thought. I mean, there's a lot of stuff happening in that code. And this is not the easiest way to read this algorithm. I mean, I think it's better broken up into pieces. Um, I'll get rid of this so I don't end up with two definitions of that. I think this is a lot harder to read than these pieces. And these pieces allow us to write some tests to clarify what things are supposed to do. I could arguably have made more subfunctions. Um, nodes gets this nodes gets called twice, that's silly, and probably ought to be a function. Um, things like this are complicated enough that they probably should be their own function. Um, maybe this, well, I don't know about the zip map, probably not, because I think our tests probably handle that pretty well. The process connection probably should have had its own test, so we should have been able to give it a thing and an edge and get say what it gets back so we're clear about what exactly it's doing so I could have done more testing um, but it works you know and I think the, the main thing is sort of I spent some time thinking through this approach getting that sort of in my head and then the thing I spent a ton of time doing off camera before at hand was just looking up the right parts of closure so I knew how to do the different things I wanted to be able to do. Like I spent way too long on this set flatten bet graph thing just because I wasn't as familiar with closure as I would have liked to have been. Um, so don't feel bad if you're looking stuff up a lot, so am I. Okay, I'm gonna stop now. 
Hopefully that helps. Let me know if it does or it doesn't. We can do more of this. We can do less of this. Um, but I quit. We'll talk to you later. Ciao.